Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and here is yet another tutorial on creating an N Queens uh, solver. So in this tutorial we're going to get back into uh, actually working on the N Queens problem. Uh, so we will start off with figuring out what moves, what positions are legal. So if you recall uh, in my program, if I were to uh, go run it in my mess of files, uh, you have at any given position positions that are legal and positions that are not. In the 6x6 six six, there are only four, these four options, one, two, three, four that are legal, lots aren't. So we already know the rules for legality. How do we code that in? So let's create another class here. So we will do uh, right click on the default package where you have the other uh, Java files or if you're on Eclipse, uh, it's a little different, but just create a new Java class, just plain. And we will call this one legal and click finish. So now we have a legal Java file and we will start by putting in there uh, a method here public and we'll put static. Now what are we going to return? We're going to tr return true or false. So we'll uh, whether it's a legal position or a illegal position. So we'll put in a boolean right there and we'll call this possible Q like so and might need a couple uh, variables there and we'll obviously need a return and I'll just put in a true and basically what we'll do is we'll go through and saying if this is the case if, or if this is the case or if this is the case uh, then it's false and if none of, if all the criteria pass, it will never return false and it will come to the end and return a true. So what we will take in is we'll first obviously we'll need an array. So the array will contain the uh, board. So it will be a board like this and certain positions will have queens in them and certain positions in the array uh, will have nothing in it. So it will be an integer and it's a uh, two-dimensional array. So we need two square brackets and we'll call it uh, queen board. And we also need one other thing and that will be uh, int i. And uh, the reason we, you would think all you need is a board and I can tell if it's legal or not. And that is true. But there's a little secret I have here to speed things up. Instead of looking at the entire board and saying, is this legal or is it not? All we need to do is look at the last piece placed and say, is that piece legal or is it not? This is basically an example. Take the 4x4 four four grid. What this program will do is it will come around and place this first queen here in the top row. And it will say, okay, is this legal? So far, none of these bottom three queens have been placed. And it would say, of course, the first piece is always legal. Then it will come to the second layer and say, if I put a queen here, is that legal? And the answer will be no, because the queen's already been there. Then it will come to the second spot and say, no, because the queen's above. And the third spot, no. The fourth spot, it will say, yes, this is legal. And then it will continue. And it will look at this piece and say, is it legal? Yes. And it will just keep going. No, no, yes but it only needs to look at the last piece moved. It doesn't need to reassess was this one legal. It only needs to check out the latest one. So that should speed it up. That way it's only looking at one queen and its associates. So that when you hit a big board like a 12, you're only looking at this piece looking at diagonals and horizontals and verticals. So that is why I have integer i which represents the uh, location of the last queen placed. So here's how we're going to set this up. We're going to first create an integer r equals i divided by and we will uh, create a variable here. Um, let's 
see. Search dot n. And uh, we will first create, I'll explain what we're doing here in a second here. Let's create one more uh, class quickly. And this will be called search. And this is where it will search for stuff. And we will have a uh, static int n equals 4. And I'll put a comment here. n is the size of the uh, board. So in a 4x4 four four grid, uh, n would be 4. In a 5x5 five five board, n would be 5. And so expanding and contracting the size of the board. Of course, a regular chess board is an 8x8, eight eight, so n would be 8 in that case. So we will now uh, um, set i divided by, that gets the row, and we will also need c which, to get the column, which would be i mod loose search dot n. All right, so now we have a row and column, and we only calculate that once, and then we can just use r and c later on. And we also need one other thing, int temp equals 1, and we'll be using that soon. I'll explain when we do. So, uh, first thing we will say is a while loop. So we'll create a while. Now, how do we know? Uh, let's first focus on which direction are we going to do. Let's do the up and left words. So up and left going this way, the way my mouse is going, uh, that diagonal. So we'll have to do four for the diagonals and so on. So uh, we'll say while zero equals uh, queen board r minus temp c minus temp. And now you should already see why I am using uh, this temp. Basically, we'll start at a certain position and go diagonally. So again, if I open up my program, which I should never have closed in the first place, we start at this position, or this one, let's say, this bottom queen, and we go up and left. That would be uh, temp being one, and then we go up and left for two, and we keep going further and further and increasing, so up and over by temp uh, squares is basically why I say minus. And so minus, of course, goes up and over for both of them. All right, so while uh, zero means that while there's no queen, temp plus plus. And uh, when the line is this short, I usually condense it uh, and avoid uh, my spacious notation there. So while nothing, temp up up. And then we need to say, how do we know uh, uh, when this while quits if we hit a piece? So let's see. So if one, so if there's a piece at, and now it would be queen, oops, my mistake, queen board, r minus temp, c minus temp, if that, then return false. There we go. So go up as long as there's no, we don't run into a piece. And if, once we quit going up, if we find a piece, then return false. Now, it will keep going up and up and up till it goes off the board. And of course, that would cause an error. So we have to put this whole thing into an error catching statement, which would be a try catch statement. So we say try all of this stuff, and then we say catch exception E, and do nothing with the error. So then we take this whole statement, put a tab in, indent it, and 
put it in there. There we go. So now we are just checked um, going up and over. So I'll just say uh, up, comma, left. Should make sense. Um, all right. Now we need to do another one. Let's make this one the upwards motion. So for upwards motion, it is very similar, which is why I've copied and pasted. The only thing different is it's R minus temp and the column doesn't change. Very simple, just like that. All right, now we will again paste in the up left, except this time we'll make it up right. And how do we do up right? We do C plus temp. And always change both of them. If you only change one, you're going to run into problems. All right. Now when we do, let's do a right one. Uh, except I will mention, uh, just hold on a second, doing right is actually unnecessary because think about it. If we place pieces starting the way you read, so uh, row by row um, from left to right, from left to right and from top to bottom, you actually don't need to worry about whatever is to the right of a piece because if I place a piece here, I know I've never checked out spots further to the right. So I actually don't need any method for right I don't need any method for down or any angle of down. I only need the three things that check that could check other queens that I've previously put on. So there are only three conditions in this case that queens could actually be. The others would be useless checks and would only slow down your search time. So this is how you basically set up the legality of it. We can't test it yet at this time, but uh, I believe it should work. Uh, and it seems like it's straightforward enough, although I see one problem already. There could be more. After every time we have to reset temp to one. Because right now temp is several over, we need to come back and say, Kate, come back to that queen we're searching and search over. Now come back and search in another direction. And so on and so forth. So make sure temp turns back to one for each of those and at the end return true if nothing else has returned false so far. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope uh, this has made sense. Until next time, enjoy Java.